When we think of gangs, it scares us because we're not in control of the violence that they have. They do drive-by shootings. They're involved with cartels of different types. There are territories that you can't go into because it's not safe. And it's supposed to be a free country. And a lot of the people that are living in these areas and in, involved with the violence that's there have an antisocial personality. We call them sociopaths or psychopaths. And yet when we look at the fact that they're on drugs and alcohol and often suffer from psychosis and anxiety and that one-third of them actually attempt suicide, it opens our mind to the possibility that it could be either. Now, a study was done in the American Journal of Psychiatry in July of 2013. It was done in the United Kingdom on 4,600 men aged 18 to 34 years old, and they evaluated these men for psychiatric disorders that were primary, for violence, for gang membership, and, and to see whether or not their, dis their disorder was associated with a psychiatric illness that was primary by itself. They found that 70% of the non uh, of the men who were nonviolent for five years uh, made up this group, and 27% uh, were still violent, and 2% were still in a gang. So they separated them into these three groups, and they studied them to see what their situations were. And what they found was that the violent men and gang members were generally younger than nonviolent men. They had fewer jobs. They had more mental illness. Uh, they used the psychiatric services more. Uh, but they seem to have less depression, which is kind of odd. Uh, they had more anxiety, more psychosis, more violent thinking. Uh, they had felt like they were victims, and they had a fear of being victimized. Of 108 gang members that were studied, 85% were considered to be sociopaths or antisocial, and two-thirds were on alcohol at the time. 57% were on drugs, and 34% had actually attempted suicide, and about 59% of them were anxious. How much of this do you think is really PTSD? Meaning something that they learned when they were, uh, with, as they were young people and incorporated into their life because that was what life was about in, in, a, in a ghetto. I've often thought that the people who are disadvantaged and grow up in these areas are almost doomed to become criminals because they're driven to it. And we don't take our responsibility as, uh, as part of society to try and, and educate bring in the money that's necessary to bring them good food, uh, educational services that are, are, are good, and some kind of teaching about how to get along with other people. So we bear some of this responsibility too. I think an awful lot of what's happening may well be eventually a, a mental disorder, which can have a formal name, but I think the vast majority is not that. I don't agree with this article entirely. I think that once you grow up in a setting like this, you are doomed to, to, to learn a way of life that's not going to make you a productive part of society. So we have to look at this issue in a, in a more fair way. We also need to dig down deep in ourselves and start finding ways to help our community to grow together in a way that's constructive for the whole community. We're about as strong as our weakest link. If we don't take responsibility for helping to clean up the ghettos, through uh, in inspiring ways, through education, through housing that's affordable, and with finding jobs for these people, what would you expect? Is it PTSD? I think the bulk of it is. This study shows that some of it is also primary psychiatric disorder. You decide. But when you do, make sure you do your part so you can help the community become more whole and, and helpful uh, for all of us to be, live in a safe place.